you're a 500 pound grizzly bear trying to cross a road, you'd better hope it's along the 56 mile stretch of Highway 93 that runs through the Flathead Indian Reservation in Montana. The Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes have lived on this land for more than 12,000 years and care so much about their natural and cultural resources that they didn't build just one safe passage for animals on this highway. They built 42. As tribal people living on the remnant of our homelands, our connection to our past, our connection to our culture, really rests in the fact that wild animals are still here, that we can use them for subsistence, that we can use them for cultural connection, that we need to have them here to have a healthy ecosystem and environment. So if you go back to our creation stories, we believe that animals were here before we were, and they helped prepare the earth for us to be here. So in a way, it's kind of us being their voice and us protecting them um, too, because they, yeah, they don't have a voice. So it's, uh, it's our generational duty, our responsibility as tribal people to help protect wildlife um, because of our relationship with them. Until recently, Highway 93 was considered one of Montana's most dangerous roads. In fact, it wasn't unusual to see bumper stickers that said, pray for me, I drive US 93. In late 1989, the Montana Department of Transportation, or MDT, proposed a plan to address these safety concerns. So they were talking about putting, putting a four-lane highway through the whole reservation with a passing lane, which make it, made it five lanes. And the elders' concern for the extraordinary disruption that that would cause um, not just a flow of traffic, but the crossings of the animals, the crossings of particularly children and, and school buses. How would the, the poorest and sickest and, and youngest among us um, be able to cross that kind of a highway? And also, how would the animals be able to cross? In most of the world, when the Federal Highway Administration and the State Department of Transportation show up and they have a project and a plan, it just steamrolls everything, right? Because this was happening on a stretch of road that passed through a sovereign nation, they had this veto card in their hand, the tribes did, to be able to say, no, we're not doing that. That's not how we do things here. During the negotiations, you know, as, as a sovereign nation, I, I think that it, it took maybe a, a little bit for them to understand what, what a sovereign nation was, the abilities and, and, uh, that a sovereign nation had. That, that in fact, that, uh, that MDT, the, the, the highway department, was, was dealing with a nation, not just a tribe, but a nation itself. And realizing that if we wanted to, we could, as a nation, throughout this highway. The breakthrough came in 1999, when the tribes engaged the Seattle-based landscape architectural firm of Jones & Jones to design a new vision for what Highway 93 could look like. So our approach throughout the entire project was, this road is a visitor. This road is going to be here at this point in time, and then eventually it's going to go away. But the land is still going to be here. The people are still going to be here. The wildlife are still going to be here, and the interaction among all of those that makes this place special, that's still going to be here. So how do we make the road respectful? How do we use that to enhance the, the story of the Salish and Kootenai people rather than to have a negative impact on it? One of the things that we found during our discussions in between negotiations was the question about animal crossings and, and a lot of internal folks were saying, hey, we've never done this before. And I brought up that, yes, we have. We've done it in Yellowstone Park. We've done it in Glacier National Park on US 2 for the goats at the Goat Lick. Um, so it's not something that was way out of bounds on what we've done before. By the end of 2000, MDT and the tribes signed a memorandum to formalize their collaboration and start working on the improvement of the highway. 
initially tribal staff, biologists, and architects sized and designed the wildlife crossings, based on the experience of the tribe's wildlife ecologist and other tribal members. They also looked at MDT roadkill data, development patterns, and the natural drainages of the highway. And so through that process, they finally agreed to go ahead and put in these, these the crossings and, the, and uh, overpass. And within two years, the wildlife department put up cameras and, and monitored these and seen with, how, with astonishment how much they were used by these animals. Not only by deer, but just about any animal that we have here have went through them. The grizzly bear, uh, the lynx, the mountain lions, the black bear, uh, the deer. And so when they did that, it, the, the fatality on the highways was reduced tremendously. On average, wildlife cameras have recorded 22,648 successful animal crossings per year at 29 structures. During the extensive monitoring period through 2015, the mitigation measures in the three main study areas reduced collisions with large wild mammals by 71%. During the last 20 years, after we worked with the tribe on Highway 93, things have really changed. And I think for the better. We're working, looking at the environment in a whole different situation than we did in the 90s. I think one of the unique characteristics of this place is that the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes had the political will and position to be able to make this highway into what it is right now. Not only did it help the tribes in, in preserving what little we have left, in preserving our, a way of life for our people, but also preserving the, the animals that, that are part of our value, part of our lives here. This is our homeland, and this has been our homeland from the very beginning of time, and it will be our homeland until the very end of time. <laughs>